Right. We are going to stream some Dwarf Fortress. Do a new world. We're going to do 250 years. Um, keep everything else default. Medium world. Everything else medium. And then mineral currency. This used to be, I think, sparse on default. But we're going with everywhere because that's the default. And I think I already fucked up. I gotta add my mods. So let's do that. I'll pause it right away. Redo it. Pause. Back to main menu. Let's try this again. So, medium, 250. So when you have mods, uh, you have to add them before you create the world. Their mods are specific to each world that you create. Uh, so the see-through smoothing is big. When you set any smoothing, it's like almost impossible to see the room you're actually smoothing. So we'll add that. Uh, this is no aquifers, just keep things simple. I know you totally can play with aquifers. Haven't really done it since I played classic back in the day. So I'll keep it up and just keep things simple. Uh, rounded hills is a graphical thing. It just changes a little bit of the look of some of the, the ramps and the hills and things. Um, so I like that one. Um, that's all I got. Nothing, nothing super game changing or anything like that. And we'll let it load here. And the cool thing about Door Fortress is it literally loads, uh, tracks every character, every uh, major item created, every like artifact, um, all the civilizations, as you can see there on the top left. Um, you know, Forgotten Beast it was struck down by a goblin, where it happened all these things uh, in the world as it goes. So we're gonna go 250 years, we're in year 105, 107, 109, 110. When it gets to 250, we'll load up our fortress, but otherwise it's gonna let the world kind of just kind of play out. And uh, this is one of the games that visually is not a whole lot, but, uh, but kind of on the back end, sort of when you really get into the nitty gritty, it, it's, it's tracking so much, it's running so much, it's such a great simulation of an entire sort of universe. Um, so this is uh, the planet of Tempest, which doesn't bode well for our fortress based on that name. And we're in the second age of legends in year 153, still rolling through. So any of the sort of pink slash purple uh, text you're seeing there is going to be any sort of uh, artifact that's created, whether it be uh, you know some sort of item of legendary quality and things like that. Uh, blue is going to be names of figures, so people, um, creatures, whatever. Um, some are humans, some are elves, some are goblins, uh, some are kobolds, some are just forgotten creatures, uh, forest titans we're seeing there hydras all kinds of crazy things so that's the blue text uh the orange kind of text there is going to be any uh place so some sort of settlement from some civilization um and then light blue sort of uh teal kind of looking color is going to be a civilization of some sort uh so that kind of sets it up so we're a year 190 and we're going to 250 so it's kind of playing through. I don't know if I can scroll through the world. I can't Let's see if we see anything good here. Uh, one of the last worlds I created had a dwarf uh, necromancer. Yep, there's one. Uh, yeah, but a dwarf necromancer become king of one of the civilizations for the dwarves. So I was looking into that. Turns out I mess some things up in the world gen so i didn't end up using that world but it was pretty cool to look in legends and see uh to see uh you know what their story was what happened turns out they had bounced around between a couple of civilizations had all kinds of interesting interaction they had discovered you know they were first to discover random things like uh like the classification of bodily fluids i mean it, it, it's incredible how specific this game can get um you know when you really look into it there's a there's there's three modes uh one is fortress mode which is kind of the default way most people will play this game where you 
have a set of seven dwarves, you build a fortress, migrants come, you know, you try to, you know, build the best fortress you can, whatever that means to you. I mean, it's very open-ended. Um, some people go for mega projects where they build giant pyramids and temples and buildings above land or uh, beneath the earth. Uh, some dig greedily and, and, and deeply and run into all kinds of issues with that. No spoilers. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of up to you. Uh, some try to conquer, you know, other civilizations by sending raids out. Some try to collect all kinds of artifacts. It kind of depends on what you want. It's, it's the typical simulation where you do what you want. Um, you know, you set the goal. Uh, all right, World Den is finished. Uh, so there's a rock running around, which is like a giant bird. Uh, Ford Fuchsia, the Lavender, routed the Fellowship of Othering of the Coast Union, destroyed puce fences uh, a couple artifacts being created um all kinds of cool stuff um but yeah so we're gonna we're gonna play now we're gonna let it kind of load through um so that's that's fortress mode uh there's uh adventure mode which is not out yet in the new steam version um they're working on that uh kind of converting everything over some kind of more of a roguelite uh roguelike uh kind of game uh, where you're just one person in this world that's created and you kind of do your thing. Um, and then there's Legends mode, which is where you can create a, create a universe, you know, just like I did. Go through and look and kind of see how... Look up different civilizations, people, uh, all the way down to artifacts, items. Um, and kind of get a feel for what's going on in that world. Kind of great for, like, the story aspect, which is what Dwarf Fortress is known for. Um... It's all about the story. So we're going to go ahead. We're going to do Fortress. You can see Adventurer Mode uh, coming soon. Uh, Legends Mode is where you can kind of look at what's going on. Um, I didn't notice anything super specific with this one. We'll see if we look at later. You can always create like an alternate save. Um, I didn't look at sort of the people in your civilization or other civilizations, you know, things that happen of, you know, of note. Um, so we'll just go ahead and click on Fortress Mode. Game's going to run for two weeks before it lets us uh, embark, which we'll do in a second. In the year 250. The tutorial, we don't know any of that. There's going to be a bunch of pop-ups like that. We'll kind of clear through them. All right, so we have a world here. Um, looking through, let's see here. All right, so the first thing I like to do is I like to choose the origin of civilization. So we have the tight spear over here. I like to look at how many sites they have what their population is. So 7,800, that's pretty big. 75 is a, a large number of sites uh, for civilizations. We'll keep going, just just take a look. So they're over here on the right side, right sort of south, uh, east side, wire of aces. Uh, only see here, one site, 15 people. They have one site right here uh, in the mountains here. And if you can see all these dark spots here are goblin, uh, goblin pits, goblin sort of controlled areas. So they're that's probably why there's so few of them. They're probably on their way out. The Pale Treaty has zero sites and two populations, so you can't even see anything. They must have been up here somewhere before. Maybe around here is my guess. Um, what's it say here? It's a goblin fortress. Monastery. Yeah, these are goblin things. So, uh, you know, not sure what happened to these guys, but these guys are not doing well. The The Pale Treaty here. Uh, two two people in their civilization. Not not a good one to pick. Uh, sixteen here with zero sites. So again, goblins seem to be pretty strong in this world. Sometimes they are, sometimes they're not. This kind of depends. Uh, the closed books thirty nine. Again, they're up here. A little bit more isolated. Looks like there's no possibly no connection between these continents. Which there's no boats as far as I know simulated in here. Um, there could be in the sort of the events that occur, but in in world gen, I don't think there are. So uh if you were to embark on like on an island like if i embarked over here uh no civilization would be able to reach me i would get no caravans no migrants things like that other than like the very basic couple uh of sort of hard-coded migrant waves that you get and after that it's up to you to sort of you know create your own population through other means um but yeah so they're a little more isolated so 39 so it looks like basically these two 75 or 39 i'm thinking i'm gonna go with the 39 i kind of like going with the lower one uh i don't know why i don't know if that's beneficial or not it's probably not um and as long as i 
embarked somewhere on this continent, I'll be fine um, where they can reach me and, and uh, do some things. Looks like some uh, human settlements here, a lot of goblins around here. I'm sorry, yeah, goblins. Um, and possibly elves over here. Are these elves? Let me get rid of this. Hold on. Uh, goblins, goblins, human, human. Cobalt. Ooh, kobolds are still around. That's cool. Their kobolds are notoriously uh, sort of weak, um, and a lot of times their civilizations do not last very long. Um, so yeah, so dark human pits, kobold monastery, human town, dark goblin. What is this? Uh, goblin fort. Okay. Um, so yeah, uh, let's see. What do we have over here? I like. I generally like temperate uh, as my go-to or a cold. Um, you know, warm just it doesn't feel right. I don't know why. It just doesn't. Um, Untamed Wilds are with the Steam version, kind of tough. Um, there are all kinds of wildlife birds specifically that will just absolutely destroy your dwarves if they're on the surface doing anything like chopping down trees or fishing or whatever. Um, so I try to aim for calm if I can. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get that here. Uh, a lot of Untamed Wilds here. I just kind of see terrible oh, terrifying is all kinds of cool stuff can happen there like raining blood or vomit or things that you know make your skin boil i mean all kinds of crazy stuff can happen in here i don't think i'm quite on that level that's a golem fort here all right let's see what else we got if i go over here I, I, I generally like having rivers, even though I don't use them a whole lot. So this is calm, warm. Let's see here. You'll notice I have no aquifers. I have a mod that I'm running uh, from Klinodev. Uh, if I'm pronouncing it wrong, I'm sorry. But uh, but yeah, they, it removes aquifers, so I don't have to deal with that. Again, you can look it up. It's totally doable to get through it. I've just never quite gotten there. I've tried to done this simple kind of run through Dwarf Fortress, and uh, I will get there eventually, but, you know. The best thing is, if you, like, join the Reddit of Dwarf Fortress, they don't they don't judge you if you're not, you know, doing the hardcore version or whatever. You know, there's people who play the ASCII kind of Matrix-looking kind of style. And then there's people who play the, the uh, what's it called? The Lazy Noob Pack, uh, which have all kinds of tools and... Uh, uh, what's it called? Tools and like software that would kind of add to the 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 easiness of, of playing the game and kind of make it a little more approachable, which is kind of like the goal of the Steam version. I feel like was to kind of replace the lazy nude pack in a, in a lot of ways. Um, but again, things like DF hack um, that made life so much easier when you're playing the the classic version um, are working on you know applying themselves to the Steam version. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. But uh, here I have, I can find some temperate, you know, let me see if I can, first, I like looking, I like, I love cliffs if I can get them. Uh, let's see, temperate shrubland. So the goblins are hostile here, so that's fine. Um, and I want, this is a stream, which is good. Brooks, uh, Brooks are like pathable, so like if people come on the map, they can cross the river, the, the brook. Uh, streams are you have to have a bridge or you know or swim across. Um, you know, brooks are sort of like shallow; you can walk across them, not a big deal. Uh, so, Temperate Shrubland. This is the Auburn Prairie, the Pale Continent. This is the name of the continent. Auburn Prairie is sort of the area of the continent. Uh, there's a stream named the Complex Scars. Again, all sort of generated automatically. Uh, I want iron and flux stone, which I have, and that's all I really care about. So I think I think this is good. This is a good spot here. Um, I have humans a short trip northeast and goblins a short trip north, which is a little frightening, but I, I think I can handle it um, if I get up and going pretty quick with some iron and or steel. Um, I should be able to set up a military pretty quick. And I, I don't think they'll mess with me too early, but they might see me and be like, oh yeah, let's go get them. But generally goblins need some sort of uh, value, like wealth uh, associated with your fort before they come and get you. So I should be okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and click here. I have a, 
a save profiler you can play now, which sets a default uh, setup, which is not bad, honestly. Um, I've done it, prepare carefully, and then you can save a version. So I'm going to go ahead and use that. Again, I said probably good. I've played Classic for a while, but I've never considered myself a hardcore sort of Dwarf Fortress. Like, I know everything. I know the min-max, uh, how to set it up, which, again, is not what the game is about. It's all about... Um, I don't know, like playing the way you want to play it. Um, so I set up sort of a fairly balanced sort of everything kind of goes. I, I could probably tweak it. Like, for example, I have like a fisherman. I probably don't need a fisherman. I rarely use it. Um, but I set it up just in case, you know, because I tend to have rivers. Um, so it's probably good. So that's why I set it up. So I'm missing here. This is a cool thing. So if you run a previous sort of setup, it'll tell you, okay, this civilization doesn't have access. So they don't have access to one humped camel meat or cherry wood barrels. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, fix that. So I'll click on items. I'm going to click on type of barrels here. And I'll just pick a different type uh, of barrel. And then let's delete this. And I'm going to go down to meats which I probably scroll right past. Yep. So instead of one humped camel, you know, totally random, you know, you can see how insane this game is. Like the amount of stuff, cow kidney, cow brain, prepared yak, prepared giant cougar, giant grizzly bear, giant mosquito. I mean, all kinds of crazy animals you can have. I'm going to go with anything that's worth two points. Um, again, I'm sure there's a way to min max this to make it make sense uh, for various sort of playthroughs, but uh let's go with yeah if, shift and scroll by the way it goes like page by page a horse mate let's go with horses Need some horse oh i have horse tripe already all right that works um so i have 48 points left so i'm going to go ahead and just kind of max that out i'm going to go with about 25 horse meat and that should max me out yeah it does um so you can see here i have seven dwarves We'll look at them later. Um, I've already messed with their skills a little bit. Again, probably not something that's perfect, but it's good enough. Um, I have animals. I have uh, two dogs, two cats, just to start off. That way, uh, you know, breeding pair of each. Um, they tend to be, I hate to say it, but they tend to be butchered later on um, because they do uh, replicate pretty fast. Uh, and then pigs, this is the one sort of min-maxing I've done. Um, uh, the sows and the boars, um, they, uh, they're like best graze per meat ratio. Plus you can milk them. There's all kinds of min things there. I've heard of it before. So I just was like, all right, let's try it for like easy kind of, uh, ways of going through it. And, uh, and yeah, so that's kind of what we go with that maxes out all of our, uh, points and we'll kind of go with it. Uh, you can mess with all kinds of things here. You have your fortress knave. Uh, Forge's name, excuse me, Gravel Gravel Mob is our one here. We could mess with this if we want. I mean, um, like, I like to do, like, you know, Gravel of something or change Gravel to something cool. Uh, I don't know, the Hill of something. The Hill of Green? That was a good one. I probably should have kept it. Uh, the hill of the hill of suck. That's good. Excellent. No, we're gonna keep going. Uh, the hill of worthless. The hill of fat. God, I feel attacked. Hill of hope. Oh, I clicked way too fast. Uh, let's go to the hill of habit. I like the alliteration with the H. Let's go. I like it. So that'll be our name. Again, you don't have to mess with that. It randomly generates it all the time. Uh, you can change your group name, your group symbol, all kinds of stuff. If there's any issues, it'll highlight them. I'm just going to go ahead and go with it. And we'll see what happens. A dwarven outpost. You have arrived. After a journey from the mountain homes into the forbidding wilderness beyond, your harsh trek has finally ended. Your party of seven is to make an outpost for the glory of all your Rothicut. Easy to say. Uh, that's the name of my civilization there. Uh, there are almost no supplies left, but with stout labor comes sustenance, whether by bolt, plow, or hook, provide for your dwarves. You are expecting a supply caravan just before winter entombs you, but it is spring now. Enough time to delve secure lodgings ere the dingoes get hungry. A new chapter of dwarven history begins here at this place, 
Ainin Uruk, Hill of Habit, Strike the Earth. So that's the default sort of intro into sort of what's going on here. So you're part of your dwarven civilization, you're setting out and starting a new outpost, um, and hopefully succeeding. Um, so we're in spring, you can see up here, we're in early spring, the year 250, 15th of granite. Granite would be the month, uh, 15th would be the day. So we're going into spring. Um, and uh, by the time we get to autumn, right before winter, we are supposed to get a caravan from our civilization. This is where, you know, you can trade some things, get some supplies, set yourself up for uh, winter and to survive through that. Now, I think that's kind of overplayed. I don't think winter is that tough unless, you know, I play pretty simple biomes. So if you're in a tough biome, it can be very tough. But we should have everything we need. Uh, if I click through this here and kind of zoom out a little bit, uh, you can see we have a nice river kind of flowing through roughly north to south. Uh, here, kind of cutting across the map. We have all kinds of trees. Every one of these little round things here is going to be a tree. Um, if I scroll up here, I'm sorry, wrong, wrong button. If I scroll up here, you can see the trees, you know, that come from each. So if you watch this little dot here and move up, this is the tree kind of that grows from that, uh, that stump there. Um, and even below when you mine through, you can't see it because you haven't mined through all this, but, uh, you can see the roots and whatnot. It, it's, it's pretty great. Um, so this is kind of sort of the setup we have. So I'm going to have to build a bridge across here, uh, because I think my plan here is going to be, uh, make my entrance to my fort somewhere, you know, somewhere around here, uh, which will be underground. Again, this game kind of goes Z level by Z level. So you're going to have to, uh, get used to seeing through that so this is me on the surface this is me scrolling down one level so this is sort of underneath where we're all standing you know we're wagons here it's underneath the wagon uh this is where the actual water is if i go over here you can see this open space technically this is the air above the river um but yeah as i go down this is the actual water this is all the stone i don't know what it is because i haven't dug down um these over here you can see if you look at the top there you these are walnut roots so these are the roots of probably this tree right here um that go down into that lake you can see the other ones over here willow roots from this willow tree right here um and yeah as you go down you you know you start to see what kind of minerals you have and and whatnot and uh and you go from there you try to build your fortress and survive um again all kinds of crazy entities out there that can attack us and and, and try to ruin our day here so we're gonna do our best so the one of the first things i like to do is uh set up a zone Again, close all these. Um, pen and pasture. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. And I just kind of set it kind of off to the side a little bit. Enough space uh, where I can fit whatever needs to graze. I don't do a ton of grazing. I used to do a lot more. But it's honestly, it's kind of a chore. Um, unless you're using DF hack, something like auto butcher, where you can sort of automatically butcher and, and, and make sure you're, uh, you're not getting too many uh, grazing animals. Uh, it just kind of becomes a chore. So I, I try not to do too much, but we do have our initial uh, pigs here that we're going to go with. And then you always start off with two uh, sort of uh, animals that that, that build your, your wagon. Um, so here we have a stray water buffalo and a stray yak cow. Um, again, not a breeding pair, which is a little bit frustrating, but not a big deal. We don't really care a whole lot about this. We can probably choose guys later. We'll see what some, the first couple migrant waves bring. Uh, sometimes they bring, you know, you'll get a... Uh, a buffalo uh you know female here for the water buffalo um or a male here for the yak um and then you have a breeding pair and you're like all right cool you know i can wait till they have uh, a few uh uh sort of generations and then i can start slaughtering them and, and get all kinds of materials from them so um so we'll we'll make sure they're pastured so they can eat um later on we will want to make uh once we access the cavern layer sort of have them graze uh there it's a little safer that way they're not on the surface uh, where all kinds of bad things can get them. So first thing I set up is that. Um, next thing I set up is a, a couple of tree chopping jobs. Um, I'm just going to do a few kind of at the top here. Um, annoying thing with uh, sort of a tree like this one is some of the logs are likely going to fall into the water here and we're not going to access them. Not a big deal for us. We don't really care. Um, again, the big thing is <laughs> I've seen some posts about this on Reddit um, where... Uh, they, you know, some guys start chopping trees and the logs actually fall from the tree and 
kill or knock unconscious the dwarf, uh, which is very frustrating because you only have seven to start off with. And while that sounds like a lot, that is not a lot to start off with. You really need uh, 20 plus to start feeling like you can have a normal industry or set of industries um, pretty early on. So, um, so we've set up our pasture here. We've started chopping down some trees. Um, one other thing I like to do early on, I don't, I don't know why it's probably not so useful, but I like to set up a, uh, pretty small, uh, refuse area. This is sort of your cats will start to kill little, uh, what are they called? Um, oh, I can't think of the word. They have it here. Hold on. Uh, let me see. Here, oh, it's not here. I think it's in our vermin. There it is. I couldn't think of the word. Uh, so your cats will kill random vermin that sort of appear based on sort of your uh, food or your uh, grazing animals. Vermin will kind of follow them. Um, you know, slugs, flies, lice, things like that. Um, and your, your cats will kill them, your dogs will kill them. And if you just want them hauled out of the way, it just causes kind of issues. So uh, we'll make a refuse pile right off the bat. Um, and then we're going to start digging. So I'm going to start with a channel. I don't have, uh, if you kind of zoom out a little bit, there's no mountain area. This is a very flat map. There's a little bit of mountain over on the top right. Um, and literally, yeah, a little bit on the bottom left. And that's it. So a very flat kind of area. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to dig a channel here. And channels are important. Uh, if you dig stairs, the wagon that eventually will come uh, from your civilization in the uh, fall uh, is not going to be able to kind of move down the stairs. Obviously, a wagon going down stairs is not something that makes any sense at all. So a channel is sort of like digging a little sort of like a ramp uh, that goes down. And they can definitely slide down that. Um, so we've dig, we're going to dig a three wide channel here, three wide again for the wagon. You can see our wagon here that I've kind of broke down. looks like uh, it's about three wide. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to go down a level and I'm just going to kind of dig from that. And I'm just going to go about here, one more, and I'm going to go across this way. Um, I always like to put a bend. I, I don't know why. Uh, it's just something that you see all the time. Um, and what I'm going to do is build some stairs. So stairs used to be, um, I don't know if they're simpler or more complicated back in the day, um, but now basically it's it's definitely made, I think, overall simpler. Um, so if you click on the uh, sort of dig a stairwell option and you start on one level and stairwells have to cross at least one Z level, right? They have to go like from one to another. Um, so I'm going to do three wide. I, it's what I prefer. I've seen two. I've seen one. I've seen people do all kinds of crazy um layouts with their stairwells and things i'm going to start off with three and i'm just going to go straight down to probably like 10 12 levels so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven we'll go 12 uh, and go down and you'll notice this one is only an upstair this is my very bottom of my stairwell and if i go up one you're going to notice it'll change um this is an up down stairwell meaning you can go either up or down a level so you can go up to this level or down to this level um and and that's sort of i've seen some issues people have had with it i haven't had any issues at all i've had zero issues with this stairwell system they've added in the steam version um, i think it's great i think it works really well um and causes me no issues if i want to move on what i'm going to do is i'm going to click the the dig a stairwell i'm going to start on the level i already have stairs and then go down and i think that's where most of the issues are However, there is an issue between digging stairwells and then you can actually construct stairs as well, which I know is confusing, but there's a time for each. Um, but we'll, we'll get there when we get there. So, um, And with that, one other thing I want to do is this is the uh, work details tab. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my miners. Uh, I'm going to click this button from green to red. And what this does is this specializes my worker. So they will only do the labors i allow them to and in this case these two will only mine that is it if there are no mining jobs they will sit around and do nothing they'll just take care of their needs and, and do nothing else and for now i'm okay with that um for my woodcutters i'm going to allow them to do whatever i only have one uh hunters i'm going to turn off hunting i just i feel like sometimes your guys can get into 
issues, combat, things that you just aren't ready for right now. Um, and there's an issue with sort of anyone that has a crossbow and, and needs bolts. That's not super fun. Um, so we're gonna we're just gonna kind of set that aside. Our planters. We're gonna pick our top two, the skilled and adequate planter. And let them go with that. Again, this is my setup with my dwarves and my skills that I set up. You may have something totally different. Um, so I have two guys that are roughly somewhat skilled, more than sort of dabbling. So I, I allow them to kind of work on that. That's up to you. So only these two are going to do my planting rather than everyone stopping what they're doing and planting. Uh, fish drawers, I'm going to go ahead and stop that. I probably will have one who's fishing right now because it defaults them immediately to start fishing. Um, but I'm going to turn that off right away. And then everything else, plant gatherers, stone cutters, engravers, haulers, and orderlies, which is like healthcare stuff, is everybody does this. So we're going to kind of leave that as is. We might tweak with this later, but for now, we only have seven doors. Let's just keep it how it is. Um, the only other thing you might want to do is uh, for your seeds, make sure they're all off. Again, they usually are. Um, and then you might decide you don't want to cook with plump helmets. Either way is fine. Um, as long as the plump helmets are consumed, uh, they will generate a seed. Um, again, we're not going to set up a kitchen for a while, so you may want to turn this off uh, for the cooking. Uh, when the plump helmet is used for brewing, it will generate a seed. Or if they just eat it raw, it will also generate seeds. Uh, or the plump helmet spawns, I guess, because they're mushrooms. Um, so up to you. I'm going to leave it for now. Um, we'll deal with that later. Uh, but just some things you want to do kind of early on and make sure you don't totally mess things up. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I am going to go ahead and start time. And you'll see uh, some guys starting to cut trees. Uh, some guys are going to start to dig. I'm going to go down a level. You can see they're digging. We have some sand here. Um, oh, I forgot to check. If you hit U uh, and go to others, you can see sort of what else is around. Uh, oops, I can't scroll here. Um, so we have anything blue highlighted, which is ugh, purple on blue, by the way. Not a good choice for reading text. Um, but those are things that are in the water, uh, creatures that are in the water. We have a common snapping turtle, which shouldn't be a big deal. The alligator snapping turtle can sometimes be an issue. Uh, we have a skunk. And then we have a whole flock of emus rolling around. Uh, I don't think any of these will cause any issues. You can see my emus right here. Um, if I go to their description, large slaves bird, very curious, and has been known to follow other creatures. Quite durable. This is specific to this guy. Um, but yeah. I love, I mean, the generation of all the personalities of everything, whether it be an emu or dwarf or an elf, whatever, has a great feel for social relationships, a good kinesthetic sense and good intuition, but it's a little willpower, very bad sense of empathy and poor spatial senses. I mean, it's an emu, like, come on. Uh, but that's that's his deal. And there's all kinds of stuff you can look into here. Uh, we're not going to worry about that. I'm going to hit F1, get us back to our area. Again, you can see a snail and a louse are on this tile around our um our pigs there and our yaks. Um, eventually, some guys will move uh, these guys into their zone. Uh, they may be in their zone already, so we'll see. Um, but yeah, we're gonna let it keep going and dig. We have no scary creatures, so we're not we're not super worried about anything right now. Uh, so they're digging through sand. It goes pretty fast, actually. <clears throat> uh, keep in mind, you do need to be careful. Uh, if I were to dig through this this tree, I can tell this tree is right in the middle of this pathway. If I dig this tree out or chop this tree down. It will create a empty sort of hole above this and if i even if i build a wall around everything and no one can access anything if anyone can access the tile they will be able to sort of climb down and get into my fort so i have to be very careful about that and wary um as i go again i can still chop it down i just have to build a floor and make sure no one can actually access it um so yeah so the, my guys are still right now digging down there's some clay some more sand and now we got into the rock layer here a couple layers down we're on elevation 23. Uh, we have bauxite we have lignite lignite is very useful um, i believe that creates uh coke um, which allows us to uh sort of use our, our metal industry we have some tetrahedrite uh going down limestone gypsum limestone some jet which is pretty cool microline a nice blue stone limestone what is this lemonite uh this is iron bearing ore i believe uh, claystone, microline. Again, we're still going. I'm going to go ahead and pause for a moment. And what I'm going to do is, so a couple of things about forts. So uh, 
people oftentimes like to build like a main level where they have a lot of like industry, a lot of people living there. So like bedrooms, uh, maybe a dining room, maybe some temples, things like that uh, to take care of a lot of the needs of the dwarves. But the way the dwarves sort of navigate their world uh, is ortho orthogonic, orthogonically. I don't, I don't know if I'm saying the word right. Uh, but basically they look every tile north, south, east, west of them, but also like up and down. Um, and so us uh, aligning your sort of fort around a vertical shaft, sort of one main shaft of stairwell, um, and then everything kind of branching off of that uh, through different sort of levels, sort of going up and down, is kind of the best way to do it. Um, again, not the way you have to do it. It's just one way to do it. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to build a little doorway uh, and I'm going to build a farm here and I'm going to build actually sort of space for two farms. Uh, and then our farms are going to need seeds. So I'm going to build an area to store seeds and then our farms are going to generate plants. So I'm going to join, uh, put a stockpile for seeds over here and plants over here. So two farm plots, seeds over here, plants over here. Um, and again, all sort of located right around that central stairwell. Um, and they're going to mine that out and set that up. That allows me two areas, uh, two levels here where I might do other things. Again, once I hit the caverns, um, I may set up an area for my uh, grazers that are sort of on the surface. Uh, these guys to graze down here once I can grow some things uh, on these levels. So we'll work on that. And then this is my first rock layer. I tend to start my first rock layer as my workshop level. Um, and this is the way I like to set things up. You do not have to set up this way. Um, this is just how I like to do it. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to kind of show you here. So 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So I like to go 12 up. And then I add my three workshops here and three workshops here. Um, and I kind of connect them this way across this sort of one path and also this way. Um, oops doesn't matter all right that way and so these allow for six workshops to be built along the central corridor um and then what i do is i do a five across stockpile um so if you imagine here for a second that i have uh that i have over here sort of like all workshops that need wood i can put a giant wood stockpile here and then they can just quickly just go over here get some wood go back you know and, and it sort of allows for some sort of efficiency here. Um, over here, maybe ones that require sort of non-economic stone, right? So uh, stone is divided up into different categories, uh, metal bearing stone, uh, economic stone, which would be things that are like flux stone or, or uh, things that are used in other sort of economies like or industries like uh, calonite is a, uh, I forget what it creates, but like a powder basically. Um, but then you have sort of those non-economic stones that don't really do anything except are used to like craft like chairs, tables, doors, things like that. Um, and that's what we'll put here. And we'll probably put some sort of uh, stone worker uh, workshops over here. The other thing I need to do and I like to do here is off the central shaft, uh, I add a couple of areas for some offices. Um, early on, we're going to have to uh, assign some nobles, uh, a uh, manager of note, and then uh, a bookkeeper. Um, manager, it allows us to make work orders and set sort of like limitations, sort of, uh, when do we create certain items? Uh, you know, what, you know, keeping track of, of how much of any item we have, things like that. The bookkeeper actually counts what you have. So you notice up here, I'm going to draw your attention up here to these stocks, uh, up here. So food, drink, seeds, meat, fish, plant, and other, um, and this little sign of course here means sort of about, you know, roughly 80 food, roughly 80 drink, uh, 60 drink, excuse me, uh, roughly 80 seeds, so on and so forth. Um, these are estimates. Now, once we set up a bookkeeper with an office, they can, we can say, Hey, I want you to count every item we have, and these will be exact counts. Um, super useful for kind of keeping track of what we have, and what we don't have. So I'm going to set up two offices here for that, um, for work orders, and then for counting sort of what we have in our stocks. Uh, and then I'm just going to go ahead and do, I'm going to let time run here, um, but I'm going to do this. Actually, hold on. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to set all of this to a blueprint because what I want them to do is I want them to mine out this area first. Uh, that way we can set up our uh, plum helmets, to grow on our farm plots. Um, and once they do that, we can set up our workshop level. So I'm gonna keep this on 
there we go okay on uh on blueprints and i'm gonna go 12 down two four six eight ten twelve nope it's not working hold on it's a little wonky with this i'm gonna just kind of reopen and click here once and i think that kind of fixes it whoops three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve all right perfect so go three down skip us line three down three down um same thing over here um, you can set up macros for this. Uh, you kind of have to use the keyboard inputs, which I am so, I was very used to using, um, using obviously the classic version um, of Door Fortress, but I kind of embraced the mouse thing and just kind of rolling with it. Um, yes, it is a little bit of work at the beginning to kind of set it up. And honestly, later on, because I'm probably going to set up a second level that looks exactly like this uh, for my second workshop level. But, you know, uh, I'm kind of embracing the whole Steam version or uh, premium version, whatever you want to call it, uh, and just kind of go rolling with it. So I'm going to use the mouse, uh, but you can set up macros with Control P. Uh, Control R will record the macro, do all the mouse uh, the keyboard inputs, and then uh, Control S will save it, or Control R will stop recording, and then Control P will play it. So oftentimes I use that for like bedrooms and things like that that are really repetitive. I kind of enjoy using the mouse. Uh, I was kind of relishing in the 15 years of not using a mouse, and now I can. So, um, so yeah, uh, I'm going to let time roll here. Uh, the guys are going to start digging or continue digging. Let's see where they are here. They should be digging down the central shaft. Yep, they are. What else do we have? Tetrahedrate still. Some more gypsum. We got here claystone. And then they should be moving their way back up. And yes, yeah, now they're starting the farm area. So over here, uh, you can see we have some alerts. So all the different sort of stones and types of rocks and minerals and whatnot that we've hit. Um, bauxite, lignite, tetrahedrate, gypsum, bituminous coal, which is really good. Um, allows us to jumpstart our uh, smelting. Um, and then all kinds of other stones there. And then uh, some weather updates. So weather is cleared, which is good. In fact, that reminds me, I'm going to pause real quick. Um, I'm just going to set up a meeting zone. Um, right here uh just to bring my guys inside and i'm also uh by default the wagon at least in classic this wagon was set up as a default meeting zone um and a lot of times notice everyone's kind of hanging out over here um i'm gonna go ahead and just deconstruct the wagon it gives you a couple pieces of wood and kind of splays all your supplies out which is a little annoying because you could have like Aya's, all kinds of weird animals steal your stuff, which is really frustrating. But um, I think it, it pays dividends because dwarves hate to be caught in the rain. Um, you'll notice, I don't know if it rained earlier. Annoyed when caught in the rain right here. She was annoyed when caught in the rain. Uh, they will remember this sort of event for a lot, for years. They'll remember one time they were caught in the rain. Um, and it, it, it doesn't have a, it used to have a huge you know, this used to be a big problem. You'd have all kinds of tantrum spirals because of one time they got caught in the rain and they could never get over it. And they ended up sort of getting depressed and going crazy and sort of started punching people and all kinds of bad stuff would happen. Um, so it's better now, but still you just, you don't want them to get caught in it as much as, you know, as little as possible. If you can help it, you don't want them to. So um, I'm going to deconstruct my wagon. I'm going to set up a meeting zone uh, over here. Um, and that way there's inside, there's less chance of getting caught in the rain. Um, I'm also going to, now that they've sort of dug that out super fast, um, I'm going to convert, hit this button right here, which is change blueprints to standard selections. And I'm just going to highlight everything and sort of let them kind of go at this. Um, one thing I am going to do, and it's a good time to talk about this, you can set priorities for the digging jobs, one being the most pri uh, highest priority and seven being the lowest priority. And a few things I'm going to set just to three. Um, you'll notice everything by default is four. Uh, I'm going to set my two uh, offices and then just a little bit of area here uh, where my first couple of workshops are going to go. Um, I want these to, this to be dug out first. Uh, if I can get my two offices uh, set up, I can start doing work orders. Technically, I can do them as soon as I name a manager, but I want like to to be able to, you know, I want to be set up for the future. So I want I want my office built out, so I can assign it to them, and I want my uh, first sort of uh, I forget what it's called stone. It used to be called Mason, 
uh, workshop. Now it's called a stone worker um, and a carpenter. Um, I can make beds over here, barrels and bins. And over here I can make uh, doors, tables and chairs, things I need uh, to set up my first couple of rooms that I know I'm going to set up. Um, so that's what I'm going with. Uh, again, I was set on blueprint over here. So I'm just going to go ahead and fix that. Um, and again, you'll see these are three. So these will be mined out in a higher priority than the fours over here. Um, so hopefully they'll start with that. And actually, I'm going to set this stuff to like five just so they don't start that right away. And I got to turn off that button. Um, set it back to four because it, it remembers what you picked, which is a little bit annoying. So again, threes over here. So mine this out first, then the fours and then the fives over here, which will access the rest of the fours. Um, so, yeah, we can kind of control what happens first. It, it's just all about control and uh, kind of predictability of what's going on. What is this lignite? Okay, so we're going to get some lignite over here, which is good. Uh, I'm going to let them sort of go all out here. Uh, and while they're digging that out, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go start our farm plots. So I'm going to go to farm plots, set it up over here, and you'll see someone come in and start to build it. And while they're doing that, uh, I'm going to go to our stockpiles. I'm going to set this one up, which I said was going to be seeds. So I'm going to click food, go to custom, clear everything out, and only allow seeds here. So seeds will go into this one. And then over here, we'll put plants. So anything that gets harvested will then go here. So food, clear everything out once again, and just put plants and hit all. So any plants that we harvest will go here. Again, I might do some service, uh, you know, collecting of plants. Eh, not quite yet. Yeah, we'll go with that. So you'll see, you know, some seeds get put in here, barrels full of seeds and bags and whatnot. And then over here will be some of the plants we brought with us. Over here, now that we have it set, I'm going to pause this. Um... So you up on top on the farm plot, I clicked on the farm plot. Uh, we have our four seasons here. So we have spring, which is right now, and we could leave a fallow. We can grow plump helmets and nothing else we can grow because we don't have the seeds. I defaulted. Uh, I think by default, you get a little bit of each um, with more plump helmet uh, spawns and then uh, just a few seeds for the rest. I kind of get rid of everything. You can always trade for them later. You can collect them yourself. I find it kind of a waste um, with the limited sort of amount you have. So uh, we're going to go ahead and put plum helmets on everything. You'll notice I have the option uh, on some of these months, summer and autumn specifically, to do pigtails. Um, I did bring pigtail uh, seeds with me. You can make all kinds of things out of pigtails. Uh, you can make, uh, I believe it's a wine. If I'm not mistaken. I could be wrong. Um, I'll check that later. Uh, but the most important thing for pigtails is you can make a uh, like cloth out of it. So you make thread. Um, and then at a loom, you can make turn that thread into cloth, and then you can make clothes out of it. Um, you know, all kinds of different clothes that, that will keep your doors happy. So uh, we'll do this eventually. For now, we're just going to stick to plump helmets. Plump helmets are sort of like the grain, right? They're mushrooms, uh, but but they're, they grow subterranean, so they're underground. Um, and they can be eaten raw. They can be cooked into meals. Um, or they can be brewed into uh, plump helmet wine, if I'm not mistaken. I think it's wine. Um, and uh, so <laughs> one thing I forgot to mention is your dwarves are all alcoholics. Like they they don't really need water. They need alcohol. Um, so you don't have to have water. You really kind of do need water because when your dwarves get hurt, you need to clean their wounds and you need water for that. Um, and oftentimes they, they will need to be fed water if they're unconscious and things like that. So you technically need water, but really you need alcohol and plump helmets are the main way to get that straight off the bat. Um, so that's what we're going to do. So spring, plump helmets, summer, plump helmets, autumn, plump helmets, winter, plump helmets. Um, and that's what we're going to go with our first farm plot. We'll probably put a pigtail plot down here. But we'll we'll keep the space for for later. Um, we'll get to that later. We don't have enough doors to really support that, so we don't need to worry about it quite yet. So uh, again, we'll go ahead and let this play out, and you'll see our two planters that we set to do the planting jobs. We'll start planting seeds. Uh, the graphics a little weirder. It used to be you could see like, oh, they've planted seeds here. Um, here you can't. It looks the same whether you planted seeds or not. Uh, however, when they're ready to harvest, you will see them kind of pop up. So you just kind of have to trust in it here. I do expect them to change this at some point. They probably will add uh, some sort of, you know, uh, graphic, you know, here represent, oh, you've planted seeds here, it's sown and, and it's growing. Um, so, yeah. All right. So we have a couple of things here. So we have our workshop areas cut out like we wanted. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a stone worker over here. 
uh, and we'll build a box site, sure. And then we're gonna build a workshop over here, and we're gonna do the carpenter over here. Then again, box site is fine. Uh, of note, you can build a workshop. Uh, I tend to do close to material and just keep building up placement, just keep that checked. Um, when you're building doors and things like that, it's just better. So, uh, pause here. We now have our workshop built for both carpenter and stone worker. So, I'm gonna go to the work orders tab and, uh, oh, actually, I lied. I'm gonna go to the nobles tab here. And what I'm gonna do is I'll appoint some nobles. So, nobles are important dwarves that uh, run things in some way, some sort of area of your fort. Uh, so, we have an expedition leader, uh, Alath Lathonrizen. Uh, laugh on a reason i don't know uh so there are uh expedition leader they're sort of in charge of this group of seven ridiculous dwarves that are coming out here on this ridiculous sort of expedition um excuse me and uh and yeah so what we need to do is pick a couple things so one i mentioned was manager so we're gonna click the plus here and i don't have a good dwarf for managing I'm just going to pick my expedition leader because they're going to get experience and kind of skills that tie in with that. So we'll go with that. Uh, and then we need a bookkeeper. And you notice here, if I click bookkeeper, uh, English here is an adequate record keeper, which is fine. So I'm going to go ahead and pick them from a bookkeeper. The last thing to note here is um, the uh, priorities here. If I click one here, you'll see uh, it lowers the precision. Whereas five would be, it says up here in the, the top part, all counts are accurate. So if I click one, it says, oh, so like 77 might be 80, 777 might be 800, 7,777 might be 8,000. So sort of the different precision levels. Uh, five, just everything's accurate. It takes no time at all, really, for them to do this. At least it used to be that way. So we'll kind of keep it at five. Um, but you'll notice the red thing here. This says that they need a study. They need some sort of office. Um, both uh, English and Alath both require an office to do their jobs, and they cannot do their jobs unless they have that office, which is why we dug out those sort of three by three squares connected to our uh, our uh, central stair shaft. So uh, I'm going to add a couple things I know that I included. So I know I included someone who can do uh, some sort of chief medical dwarf job. Uh, this is Irvad. Uh, again, he has no requirements here to do his job, so we'll keep him there. And then a broker, this is a guy who's in charge of trading. Again, Alath, who is also our expedition leader and our manager, is going to be that person. So they're pretty busy. Uh, but again, that kind of helps because we just make one office and it takes care of everything. So uh, everything else will keep kind of vacant for now and we'll go from there. So now that I've assigned that, what I'm going to do is go to the My Orders tab and you can see I can set up work orders. Um, so this is a super powerful screen. I think it took a bunch of people a little bit of time uh, to really understand uh this screen uh and the power it has um and there are some tweaks you could probably make to it there's some really specific sort of nitpicky uh sort of like recognizing the text string and things like that um you know that it doesn't do uh but overall it's really great so a few things i know i need and again i'm not going to set up sort of conditional settings right now we'll do that in a minute uh what i'm going to start off with here is just uh uh, is just the the basics we need for our two offices. So I know I need doors. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take rock door. Uh, I click on that, and I know that I need two for sure. I'm gonna go with just like I guess four, um, a few extra just in case we need some more later on. Uh, so I'll go with that. Uh, and then I know I need a table. Oh, I should type in the rock table. And uh, I'm gonna do 10 here. Uh, we're gonna set up a dining room fairly quickly. Um, so I want a few extra tables rolling around. So we'll just do 10. Um, and then we need chairs. Now, when you have chairs made of rock, they're actually called thrones. And this is that type of thing. If you type in rock chair, it's just not gonna pop up. Um, so you have to just know that. And that's one of those things that really like, for new people, this is part of that like, Instead of a learning curve, it's a learning cliff. Um, so rock throne is what we're looking for here. Again, I'm going to do 10 because we need two for the two tables we're going to have in our office, uh, two offices. Uh, and then we have eight extra tables and eight extra chairs. So that'll be just fine for a dining room. So we'll leave it at that. Uh, we also, if you look here, we have our carpenter set up. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to my work orders and uh, a few things I know I want. So uh, we want barrels. And again, we have to type wooden 
first and then we're gonna type barrels here uh i do not need 10. Uh, i'm gonna go with like three uh something like that uh barrels are what you store food uh miscellaneous uh drinks um, just all kinds of random stuff going barrels. So it's really good to have a lot of barrels kicking around. We're going to start with three for now. We'll update this later, but we're just going to start with three just to kickstart things. Again, we don't even have a still yet to like sort of make our, our plump helmet wine. Stick with barrels, uh, a couple of barrels for now. Uh, the other thing we need is bins. Uh, bins are what you store sort of the other like non-food, non-drink items, uh, finished goods. So things like our crafts that we're going to make as part of our like sort of major industry. We're going to trade with our civilization to get more supplies, things like that. So we're going to make some bins uh, again. I don't know. I'll go with three. We'll start with that. It's fine. Um, and then the last thing we need to make sure we have is beds. We're going to have to make rooms for our dwarves. They want to sleep. They can sleep on the floor. It's fine except it's not that fine. Uh, they're going to get kind of annoyed by it. So we want to make sure they have a comfy place to sleep. I'm going to make 10 beds. Uh, let's make 12. Um, we start off with seven dwarves. We're going to get a migrant wave in the next month or two. Um, so let's go ahead and start off with just a few extra kicking around. Again, carpenter workshop's not super busy. Once they make their barrels and bins, they'll start with the beds, and that's fine. Uh, keep in mind, you can change material. You can do all kinds of like specifics here. We're not going to mess with that. We're just beds of whatever uh, specifically wood here uh, in vanilla sort of non-modded door forges beds are only made out of uh, wood you cannot make them out of stone I think there's there was a mod the master worker mod that allowed wooden uh, I'm sorry stone uh, rock beds but uh, not not here in vanilla slash steam version whatever uh, this should get us started so we're gonna let our guys mine out uh, continue to mine out our sort of area. We're about to build our wood stockpile, which is great. And in the meantime, you're going to see some guys get to work. So here, he has a bauxite block. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, he's working on making a door. And you'll see the door pop up in a second down here, which just means this is what's located. There it is. Turned into a door. It's actually a nice door. Um, and we can go ahead and place that. We're going to wait just one minute for a few other things to get built here. And I'm going to actually start putting a stockpile down for wood, which allows some of our other dwarves that are maybe not so busy to start hauling some of that wood. So if I look up here, you're going to see it's like these guys going and grabbing wood, coming down, and you'll see them start to place it over here. Here we go. There's one. Boom. Wood. Uh, which helps out our carpenter. They can just go right over here and grab some wood if they want to. Uh, looks like he's still passing the other way. I don't think he knew that there was wood right here quite yet. Deals with the sort of queuing of the jobs and whatnot. But yeah. Uh, so they're going to go ahead and mine this out. Um, in the meantime, I'm also going to set up an area. Uh, in a little bit, we're going to have our civilization send a, um, a caravan. Sort of to sort of see how we're doing, making sure we're doing okay. Just enough space, I think. Hold on, let me double check real quick. Trade Depot. Yeah, I just thought it was a little extra close that off um and our civilization will send a caravan to come and check out how we're doing and trade some things with us see what we need and also collect some things from us so uh we'll build a trade depot here and this allows the trade depot to come right in you know trade our materials here and leave um i can still sort of build some defenses here to help uh in case we need to close things off uh invaders sieges undead titans whatever um so yeah, uh, all right, some more is getting dug out. So I'm gonna go ahead and build some more workshops here. What I like to do is I like to build two stone worker shops here and then uh, a craft dwarf shop over here. And this area is dug out too. So I'm gonna go ahead and over here, I'm gonna set a stone stockpile, but I'm gonna turn off metal and economic and clay and all i want is all the other stuff so anything that's not metal not sort of flux stone or makes a powder or whatever it is uh or a, a, a coke or whatever um and no clay uh just give me whatever else there is that i can sort of mold things out of and we'll leave that there um and once i dig this out i'm gonna go ahead and expand this here there it is so that's expanded out so both those workshops are now set up uh I'm sorry, both the workshop areas are now set up. Uh, over here we have carpentry. Let's see what else we can add here. We're gonna need a mechanic. I'm gonna put it over here. I don't really care 
if it's over here. I know it mostly needs stone, but it's not a not a big sort of difference there. Um, and then I also like to put a wood furnace. So I click on furnaces, click on wood, and put it here just because it's so close to the wood stockpile. Um, and it kind of kickstarts your uh, smelting, even if you don't have um, access to any sort of like coke bearing kind of uh, rock, you know, bituminous coal, lignite, whatever. Um, and that sets us up to be able to build our offices. So I'm going to build some doors. I'm going to build some tables. Hopefully I have everything and I'm going to build some chairs. Uh, I'm using some keyboard shortcuts, uh, B for build, uh, F for furniture, and then uh, tables, T, chairs, R. Uh, a lot of times they use the last letter of the, of the word. Um, and then for doors, it's B, P, and then R. Again, the last letter of the word. So I'll set those up. They're built. Great. What I'm going to do now is set up my offices. Uh, you can in individually assign offices. So I can do this. Good, I have an office, great. Um, but I'm gonna cancel that. What I can do is I can click office and click on this multi button here. And what it does is it kind of looks for what parameters it needs to have an office and uh, in the highlight. So I'm gonna go ahead and highlight this whole area and you'll notice, boom, two offices created. Um, I'll hit done. And now I have both offices set up. And you'll notice that with the top left, it sort of tells, gives an icon as to what it is. I have some miasma here, what is that? something die or is it just the food it's this rotten horse meat okay i need to this happens from time to time i haven't had this happen in a while uh i'm gonna build a uh a dump area over here hold on garbage dump i'm just gonna put it like this small sort of area over here and i'm gonna go down and click on this and hit this trash can. This allows you to, it says toggle the dump status of the item. Items are dumped in dumping zones. So I'll do that and hopefully someone will haul that out of here. Miasma is sort of like a, like a, it's not a, it's like a fog kind of thing. It's like a gas um, and it makes uh, very unhappy thoughts for the dwarves. So we don't want it, especially not on our central staircase. Like anyone moving in this area is gonna feel it. You can see the little purple speckles. So we're gonna get that out of our base. If it goes up in the air, it uh, surface level kind of dissipates. We don't have to worry about it so much. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and get that hauled out. Um, I'll keep time going here. Um, and all I need to do here is I need to assign each office to a person. So I'm gonna click here and I know our expedition leader is one of them. And our other office, I know our bookkeeper is the other. And they will start counting. And you'll notice here, look at this count here. It's going to change in a moment once our bookkeeper, boom, starts counting. And they've already immediately counted everything. So we have 70 food, 48 drink rather than 50, uh, 57 seeds, 43 meat, so on and so forth. Um, and yeah, so that kind of sets things up for us. So we know exactly what we have in our fortress. Uh, I'm going to keep digging here uh, or queue up some mining jobs. Uh, I'm not going to build our workshop area down here. What I like to do is I like to go down a level and I like to build a, um, a general stockpile. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I like to do about eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Sort of an, you know, eight diagonally from here and an eight from here uh, stockpile. So they'll dig this out when they're done um mining out the workshop area which they're almost done um and we can start setting up some stockpiles here to get some of the stuff on the surface off of the surface uh again over here is exposed anything that wants to take it can come and get it uh, and before i get too many jobs going which ugh, i'm sometimes guilty of uh what i'm gonna do is set up a couple of bridges so i'm gonna do one right here i'm gonna do, i like to do three by three or I'm sorry, three wide and then however much across I need to do. You'll notice I click this button over here. This allows it to, uh, if I attach a lever to this with some mechanisms, uh, if I pull that lever, this bridge will sort of rise up um, and sort of form a wall uh, vertically um, as opposed to retracting, which is this button right here, where it just sort of like pulls away. Um, both are useful. In this case, I want it to, to sort of rise up. So I'll click that there. Again, it's using the closest material, that's fine. Someone will come and build this eventually. What this allows me to do uh, is any migrants 
or caravans or whatever that might come from the side of the map over here uh, will then have access to my fort. Of course, it also gives access to invaders, but invaders can kind of swim anyway, so it's really not a big difference. Um, for now, until it gets built, hopefully, uh, our migrants come from the other way. So bookkeeper, we build beds, table thrones, petrified wood. All right, good. Um, I think what I'm going to do now while this stuff is getting built out is I'm going to go to my work orders and I'm going to start setting up some sort of recurring sort of conditional work orders. Um, so a few things like I want, like for example, beds, right? I know I want a certain amount of beds. So uh, what I'm going to do is every day I'm going to make two beds if the amount of beds I have ready to place is, I don't know, let's say less than 10. We'll just leave it kind of default. So every day it'll check. If I have less than 10 beds, it'll make two beds until I have 10 or more. And that way we don't have to worry about, oh, do I have enough beds? It's always going to kind of do that. Um, and we'll do that for a few other things. So I'm going to do rock table. Again, start with the material and then the item. Uh, again, uh, you want to go down to, uh, you don't have to. I like to go down to a lower number. So if uh, it's going to queue these jobs up into different workshops without us worrying about it, if you put 10, it's going to queue up the 10, you know, and it, it, it may not do them immediately like 10 in a batch, but it's going to take a long time to get through it. Um, so I'd like to do smaller numbers uh, at first. Again, if we have less than, uh, I don't know, let's do eight. Less than eight tables, we'll make two. Uh, excuse me. Uh, let's do another one for chairs. So rock throne in this case. Again, a little bit annoying. Again, we'll go down to two. And we'll set a condition for amount of rock thrones that's less than, again, we'll do eight. We don't need as many chairs, I don't think. Uh, so beds, tables, chairs, we need doors. So let's do rock door. We'll do down like two, uh, I'll do three doors. But doors we tend to need more of, so I'll do a little bit larger uh, number, higher number there. And then we'll do, again, 10 doors. Uh, we'll make three. Again, that allows, if we end up with nine, that's less than 10, it'll queue up another three. So we get 12, um, which gives us a little bit of breathing room where we have 12 doors. We only check if there's less than 10, so that gives us sort of three doors to go through before it starts queuing up more door orders, um, which keeps our dwarves, I don't know about less busy, but more busy doing things we need them to do. Uh, so yeah. Uh, all right, so table, throne, doors. We have beds. Uh, other things we need, let's see. We need, so one thing we need is to set up our sort of economy. Uh, so I'm gonna make rock mugs. Uh, something I like to do, it's useful in your fort. Uh, dwarves prefer to have a mug or a goblet, which is some metal mug, uh, to drink out of. Um, so it's useful for that, but it's also just easy to trade, like, one craft. I could just make crafts, but it's going to make all kinds of random stuff. Uh, if I pick mugs, it's just going to craft store shop will only make mugs, and I can just search for mugs and trade them. Now, that's not entirely true because the trade interface right now is kind of garbage. Uh, but I, it's it's one of those things where I know it's not working as intended, and I know they will fix. Um, so what I'm actually do, because this is my industry, I'm going to go with, like, make, like, 50 at a time. And my condition is going to be, if I don't have, uh, like, like what, 2,000, like, uh, some, you know, absurd number, uh, we're never going to have 2,000 lugs. But if I don't have 2,000, make 50. Um, and then check if I, after that 50, I still have 2000, make another 50 until I get 2000, which is basically saying make it forever, which is fine with me. Um, so we're going to do that. Uh, I also need rock mechanisms. Again, I don't think I have the manpower to do this, but so I'm just going to rock back I'm just going to make 10 initially. We'll come back to this. Um, and then what's the other workshop we have charcoal and eh, we're not going to do charcoal yet. We'll wait. Cause I'm not setting up my smithing, uh, smelting. Uh, quite yet. Ver Verisite. I've never heard of that. Interesting. So my guys are going to keep working for a little bit. Um, and uh, digging out here. We got our farmers farming. We got people carrying stuff. We got cats killing all kinds of rat remains. Rat remains. So they're doing their job. Um, I may want to set up some doors here. This might help this problem. I don't have enough doors. But two is fine uh, to keep my stockpiles kind of safe. Um, 
we have this area. Ooh, we can build our depot. So I'm going to set that up because sometimes it takes a while. Early on with only seven dwarves and all these jobs kind of queuing up. It takes a while to set these guys up. Uh, so we'll see when that happens. And on the surface, we have our uh, zone here, our pasture. Uh, we have our refuse stockpile. We have a dump over here. Again, I don't know if that horse got taken yet. It looks like it's gone. Huh. I don't know where it went. I don't know what happens when you when you dump stuff. It might just kind of like dissipate pretty quick, especially on the surface. Um, but yeah, so we got this guy going. We got this going. I'm surprised they haven't dug this out. I guess they're digging down here. I could change priorities, but I'm going to let them kind of do their thing. Take a look at some of our notable dwarves here. Uh, I'm going to hit U, which takes us to our creature screen. Uh, we have our expedition leader, which I want to look at. They're 83 years old. I willpower overbearing. Disdains the martial prowess. Interesting. Probably not a good uh, person to put in your military. Values cunning. Not easily depressed. That's very good. And they've developed empathy. They're my expedition leader, the manager, and the broker. They're healthy, great, talented miner, so on and so forth. Uh, they finished up some work. I know I'd have to sleep on a rocket floor. Oh, I have to build my beds. Let's do that next. Uh, our bedrooms. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to mine out some things. And this is how I set it up. Again, you can see the value of a macro here. But uh, what I like to do is set up bedrooms. And I do a three by two. I'm sorry, a uh, two by three. Uh, bedroom here. Uh, so a door here. And then a little bit of space here for a bed, a cabinet, and a coffer. Um, or like a chest where they can store items that they have. And I could sort of go around the stockpile slash workshops uh, as many as I can. And what, again, I kind of go for efficiency. Oops. Uh, I kind of go for efficiency when I can. Um, and I feel like if they're sleeping right on the level where they're working, it just sort of speeds things up a little bit. So we're going to build a whole sort of area on here. And I think I get like 36 or something bedrooms out of this. Um, I could macro this, but kind of satisfying to do the mouse thing, even though I mess it up all the time. Oops, see? And, uh, and as I queue up sort of the things they need in their bed, first of all, all they need is a bed and a door. Um, but I like to add coffers and cabinets. It just makes them a little bit happier and satisfies a few different needs like acquiring items, storing clothes, things like that. A few more. Uh, all right. So autosave on the seasons, I like to set that up so I don't ever lose too much. If, you know, I've had, I think, one crash. And I think the crash was when they sent out an update. Um, because when it crashed, I noticed there was a brand new update that got out like minutes before I crashed. Um, so I don't know if that was like a Steam issue or something like that. But anyways, autosave helps a ton. I know there were some early crashes uh, early on with some uh, aspect ratio and resolution things. Uh, I did not have those problems, but if you're like ultra widescreen, that was an issue. Um, so seasonal saves for me. Uh, the annoying thing I gotta set up is it doesn't pause after the save, so I can't get up and go anywhere when it does that, which is a little annoying, but I'll, I will gotta that's a me thing, I gotta tweak it. Um, set up the last few bedrooms here. And then uh, one other thing I did, uh, I did alter my uh, announcement file. Uh, it's like announcements.txt. Um, that changes sort of which things sort of bring up a pop-up as, a, you know, migrants, uh, uh, what's it called, uh, taken by mood, things like that. Um, all those things will generate sort of a, 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 a an announcement that lets me, like, actually alert me to what's going on. Uh, same thing with combat, it'll make a sound, uh, things like that. So, uh, you can keep track of what's going on with your dorms a little bit better. That's one of the kind of big sort of universal complaints with this one is, you know, back in a classic, it would sort of like zoom your screen to an area and say, hey, this is happening. Uh, and then this one, it, it generally doesn't do that, but a very minor tweak can kind of fix that in your announcements file. So um, 
kind of Google that, see if you want to tweak that. It's, it is useful. Uh, and you'll see how it changes uh, for me as it goes. <sighs> Mechanisms are done. No tasks here, which is interesting. Probably because I need to play stuff. So what I'm going to do is... Oh, I kind of want all my bedrooms up here, but I guess I'll put them down here. Uh, so what I'm going to do is build furniture bed. And I like to put them in line with the doorway here, so I'm going to do that. And uh, you'll see them start coming in and placing them hopefully soon. Put one here because I want one over here. All right, we're out of beds. Uh, so next thing I'm going to do is build oops, a door for all of these bedrooms. Anything with a bed is going to get a door. I think that's all the ones I placed. Otherwise, we'll wait. Yes, I could place more, but we'll, we'll chill and wait. Um, and then anything that gets a bed and a door, I'm going to start making bedrooms. So I'm just waiting like a minute here. Uh, say please these. I only need seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So once these are done, you know, or you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So once these are done, uh, I can start doing it. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and do it for these. So I'll do bedroom again, multi, for, like just like with the office. Just kind of drag. Make sure you get the outer wall. It counts for uh, some of the value of the room, uh, which changes sort of how happier they are with the room. But uh, apparently, if you share a wall like this. Doesn't count for both. I don't know. Whatever. It's, it's bedrooms. They're fine. I could do matchstick bedrooms if I wanted. I'm just not going to because I'm nice. And these. You can see I have plenty of rooms now. Uh, if I click here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So I have 11 bedrooms. Uh, and I haven't even made this one yet, which I'll do. Bedroom, please. Thank you. Um, that's 12. So that's way more than the seven dwarves that we have. Uh, so they'll start getting happier because they can sleep in a bed and it's their own bed. It's not a dormitory or anything like that. So I, I tend to not use dormitories. Some people do. It's great, totally useful. It makes things a little bit better for a little while. I just skip that step and go right to, to bedrooms, uh, personal bedrooms. So I'll let them dig out a little bit more, uh, build some more beds. Again, you know, we have four here, but I'll, I'll wait till we have a little bit more and uh, build some more. So, But that should keep most of the guys happy. All right, we have our stockpile zone or stockpile level ready. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to build sort of the most important stockpile, which is the furniture, furniture stockpile. Uh, every stockpile, or I'm sorry, every piece of furniture we build takes its own tile to store. We can't put it in a bin. We can't put it in a barrel. Uh, so we need a lot. So I make at least 75% of the area uh furniture and we'll kind of go with that uh everything else uh is does need a lot because we can either store it in a bin or a barrel so i'll just do sort of small i'm actually going to even have these um so we'll do this for ammo i'll do a new one for uh do a new one for something that we don't use like uh let's do coins uh another half one for weapons uh, another half one for armor. Uh, I'll do a full one here. Do it for sheets because I, I do like to order those for our temples and libraries and whatnot. Uh, did we do weapons? Yes. Uh, let's do one big one for claw. We'll do a big one for leather. Again, I, I try to group them too, so it's a little bit easier to find if I need to. Uh, let's do gems, even though I'll have another one later. Again, this is just to make sure we get stuff off the surface. We're not worried about like, oh, I'm going to, you know, make this better later. Uh, you know, we know we're going to do that. Let's just get it off the surface for now. Fire some blocks. Um, what am I missing here? Uh, finished goods, I'll do a little bit bigger. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do finished goods. I'm going to do two for finished goods and i'm actually going to do two for animals which i might change later but uh animals will store animals that we have but anything in a cage uh not just like loose animals um which is why we need more because each cage takes up one spot 
Um, and we're going to make a bunch of cages later for uh, some traps. Uh, so we want to make sure we have enough space for that. Finished goods get scored in bins, but we make a ton of them with our mugs. You can see the individual mug here, but we can fit a bunch of mugs, like 60 or something in a bin, um, depending on the weight and whatnot, or size. I don't know how it works, but uh, we can fit a lot here. We can see our uh, a splint here uh, for our health. We have a weapon here, uh, copper pick, that we'll use later. Uh, again, I only have two people working on that uh, mining, so we'll, we'll fix that later. We just don't have enough dwarves yet. Place more beds. All right, and then let's get, get some doors going. Ooh, extra doors. Oh, no, not too many. Let's see, anything we haven't placed as a bedroom? Nope. All right, we'll wait till they place those. We got that. I'm gonna dig out our second. Ah, uh, no, I'm not. I'm gonna skip a level. And what I'm gonna do here, oops. What I'm gonna do here is build out our, uh, I'm pausing real quick. Uh, I'm gonna build out our dining room. Uh, it's important that they have a place to eat, socialize, drink, most importantly, obviously. Um, and, uh, and we can actually eventually make it into a tavern or an inn and uh, have sort of visitors from around the world show up uh, and do various things perform sing poetry play music um, tell stories share rumors about different artifacts um, try to get rumors about our artifacts um, which is always exciting um, or even like sort of you know roam through the caverns we find and try to kill monsters and things like that and that way we don't have to do it they can do it um, although they're they're pretty bad at it but whatever uh, so I want to do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, let's do one more. Oops. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We'll do eight into the middle and then eight again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then go up. I'm going to go up to something like that. Uh, that should be nice and big. Um, what we're going to do is I like to sh kind of shape it a little bit. Um, value for a room is based on uh sort of the edges smooth edges of walls um so this is a kind of easy way to kind of maximize that uh when you start smoothing the walls later on when you have sort of the ability to i'll put one sort of section here again just to add a little bit more value uh, which leaves me space to put like a row two you know two rows of tables with some chairs and then sort of dance area um off to the side eventually what i'm going to do over here is i'll do a uh like a still and a kitchen and a stockpile for drinks and food over here that they will have access to um and over here or back here we'll see later on um i'm going to do some sort of sort of uh like an inn you know extra rooms that people can rent things like that um for now I'll let them take it out and go from there um so they'll dig that out um and Let's see what's going on over here again i'm mostly waiting for more dwarves that's really what i want because you'll notice i have all these jobs queued up to like okay we have doors we have table you know you know we have doors and i have all these jobs here saying bring a door over here but no one is available to do it because people are either mining they're constructing things doing all kinds of stuff so i need more hands um and i only have seven here great time to kind of talk about sort of the happiness here um, when migrants show up they default at this sort of neutral sort of area so we have three there two kind of happy two very happy and no one sort of like just in bliss right um but we're gonna work on that we're gonna build some temples and things like that our our dining room is gonna really help that um but what you don't want is people down here because this can cause tantrums where people sort of go out of control start punching whoever they see whatever they find um causing issues and then if they kill someone or if they die themselves everyone who like liked that person that gets bad thoughts and then they can tantrum and it sort of causes what they call a tantrum spiral <sighs> then you're screwed uh and you can very easily lose a fort due to that so you have to be very careful uh in managing the moods of your dwarves all right our trade depot did get built which is great um so uh we're in midsummer we still have to go through the uh get to the autumn before they send a caravan but we're well on our way to that they've also built this bridge which is awesome uh we don't have to worry about um if i zoom out a little bit just make sure oops i hit the squads button by accident um if anyone spawns sort of anywhere south of this river 
and like around this mountain area and over to here uh they can at least path to our fort uh, if they spawn over here we don't have to worry about it they don't need to use the bridge but yeah um so there's that so we don't have to worry about that anymore i'm gonna chop a couple more trees i have some wood lying around but i'm not a fan of the amount i have so we'll chop some more probably lose some toast some water that's fine i noticed this right here a magpie got killed probably by birds um we also have a colony of honeybees i might do mead later i've I, i've heard it's hard in the previous versions um you know it's not like super rewarding but i kind of want to do it um just to say that i did it so uh over here you can see we went down a level and you can see some of the wood from a tree that we cut down over here uh dropped into the water and we cannot access that there's no way sort of in and out they might be able to but it's not worth it so they were like screw it we'll leave it the logs there a um, little bit annoying again but it's okay when we get to the cavern we're gonna have plenty of wood not a problem um, all right so some of these doors and beds got placed which is great let's do our bedroom selection highlight these highlight these so we have more beds bedrooms uh speaking of beds let's place some more over here Again, this is overkill. We do not need this many yet, but we are going to. Uh, so I'm just kind of preparing ahead of time. And again, I like uh, the setup. We have our workshops, our stockpiles, and people living all on the same level. And it's pretty compact. We're not, you know, we're not spending a lot of time walking for the most part. So I like it those we have those let's get some over here oh almost done so we need two more doors and like a handful of beds and we have like the basic bedrooms done um and then yeah we have our stockpiles and we have a second workshop level we're going to set up here i'm just not doing it yet because i want them digging this out which they did which is great i'm going to build some oops wrong button build furniture table um, so I'm going to build some tables. I'm going to do something like this. The two across, one in the middle. And let's see if I have enough. I do. And then some chairs. Again, one table per chair, which is why I do this sort of double setup. Oh, well, we got migrants. Great. Uh, we'll see how many. So we already have one because we had seven. We now have eight. Let's see how many more we get. Nine, ten, eleven. All right. So uh, four migrants. I'll take it. Uh, that's four more sort of sets of hands um, they also sometimes bring uh, animals that might need to graze and if you don't sort of deal with that uh, they oftentimes can starve uh, so we're going to go ahead and take a look quick and make sure we don't have anything else oh no we don't it doesn't even scroll all right so nothing they didn't bring anything useful all right uh, they'll kind of hang out, get accustomed with things, and then start working pretty soon. Let's see here. Beds. I think that's all the beds we need. Excellent. So all the beds are done. Let's see if we have all the doors we need. I don't see any doors we need. Excellent. Amazing. Um, so that's good. So we once those get placed, we can finish up setting the rest of our bedrooms, which is awesome. Uh, we have our temple set up. I'm going to go ahead and set this up as a zone for our dining hall. That way people will start eating here. Um, so done. Set it up. And uh, we need a door to kind of separate it. And then we also need... Oops. Each? yeah uh we need some sort of chest uh coffer that will store mugs uh this is kind of an eventual thing when we make this an inn um i'm actually gonna put it over here oh we don't have any that's weird wait did i not set up an order for that oh i didn't all right so let's do that uh so we're gonna start kitting out our bedrooms so i'm gonna make a rock coffers which is the chest i was just trying to make um uh, again we're gonna do We'll do three and we'll only do that if the amount of actual rock coffers that we have uh, available to place is we'll do less than 10 which again 
you know, if we do this three times, it gets us to nine. It still doesn't satisfy. We do another three, it gets us to 12, um, which is a few extra. It gives us some breathing room. Um, and then we also want rock cabinets for sewing clothes, I believe, what they do with it. Um, we'll do three as well. We'll do amount of cabinets. And we'll do... Did we do 10 before? I can't remember what we did over here. Yeah, we did 10. So we'll do 10 again. Same thing, same thing. Just keep, keep them paired up so that way we have the same amount. We always kind of finish on the same bedroom. Again, kind of my OCD, but whatever. Deal with it. Um, so we'll set that job up. I'm glad I kind of caught that. Um, the other thing I'm actually going to set up real quick is I'm going to set up some statues. Uh, statues are a great way to... A couple of things. Number one, sets up, uh, helps build up your like wealth, um, which double-edged sword. Um, the more wealth you have, the more sort of attention you get, um, which is mostly bad. Can't be good, but mostly bad. Um, and I want like 12 at least kicking around, and if I not, you know, if I don't have 12, make five until I get 12. Um, and uh, the other thing to do is actually looking at them, you can learn a lot about A, the individual dwarf who made the sculpture uh, or the statue. Um, you know, it kind of tells a story about what, you know, uh, sometimes you have a dwarf who just like loves like a certain creature. Like they love like panda men. Like I had one that made just like panda men statues everywhere. Um, and you learn about the dwarf making it, but you also learn about like who they made the statue of. Uh, sometimes you learn about the history of the world, the history of your fortress. Um, you know, they oftentimes will like have a statue of like when your expedition expedition leader was named, when your bookkeeper was named, um, when you know someone made a masterwork something, you know, mug whatever bin. Um, you know, they'll they'll sort of codify that into a statue, um, which is super cool. Uh, because uh, yeah, you know, you just get to learn kind of that stuff that you don't get to see, you know, on the surface. You know, this is a game that graphically is not, you know, eye-opening in any way. Obviously, um, they had an old day that got it to like nineteen ninety-four graphics, but um, the background simulation is so in-depth, and uh, and you really get to see that with the statues. So I, I like the statues for that, but also just like the general like sort of wealth increase and sort of. You know things like that um so they've done that i'm also going to build a sort of generic temple here uh your your dwarves do like to pray uh to various gods and uh, i'm actually i'm gonna i'm gonna switch this up a little bit i want to go sort of less wide or long let's do something like that um uh, and this will be a sort of generic temple, like sort of pray to whoever you want kind of thing. Um, but uh, but yeah, it'll kind of keep people happy uh, until we can get individual temples for literally every single god that is worshipped in our civilization. So we'll do that. All right, so we got some bedrooms to create. Again, so much easier with this tool. It used to be such a pain in the butt. All right, bedrooms made. Ah, uh, see, so I'm talking about Kaya stole our rope. So let's hit you, see what we got going on here. Ah, uh, so many Kaya's. All right, what do we have on the surface? We have mugs, splint that needs to be carried. That's all we got. This stuff should be able to carry. All right, let's build a hospital. Uh, hospital store, the things that are going to be stolen right now. So let's go ahead and just. Build a quick kind of hospital here. Uh, let me go a little bigger on the side. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, that should work. All right. Uh, the other thing, you don't have to do this. I just like to do this. Uh, I like building altars. So um, for the first one, I'm just gonna build a rock altar. Um, it just feels right, and I'm just gonna build one. Uh, later on, I'm gonna make them out of iron or like platinum or something like nice uh, for my temples, just to make them work. Oh my god, Kaya's killing me. 
Anyways, uh, build furniture statue there. Uh, I always build some sort of chest. In fact, I want one over here. Uh, they, they can store instruments here. They like instruments to you know do performances and the way they worship and things like that. Oh my god, they keep stealing stuff from me. And it's all because I don't have guys to haul stuff. Honestly, I need more kids. Kids used to be like the worst. Dwarven children, they did nothing but eat, drink, and that's it. Uh, now they haul, which is really helpful. Um, and they're actually kind of useful, which is great. All right, so I'll build beds there. I'm going to build tables as well. Uh, and then I need a couple of these guys. Okay, one is fine. I'll build the other one later. And then a door. Um, and I'm going to set this immediately as a hospital. So, of course, it's safe. Uh, hospitals are actually in the meeting zone now. So you place down a meeting zone and then you select hospital. Um, they used to be their own sort of separate zone. But they're very buggy for a very long time. Uh, doors wouldn't carry the right stuff to them. Um, you know, threads, cloth, splints, whatever they needed. It, just, it was very buggy in how it worked. Um, it seems to be working really well now. And it, I think it worked before the Steam version uh, for several years, but there was a long time where hospitals were like, ugh, just like, don't put a, don't put a chest in your hospital. It's not going to work out well. All right. Uh, built that. I was sitting at my hospital. Okay, let's go. Except, so I'm going to click the assign new or existing location. Uh, in this case, a new one. I don't click my hospital. And you can see I have the home of ink, which is the name. Uh, I can see all kinds of details. So the home of ink it is a hospital. Uh, here it is all visitors are welcome. I can set it to citizens and long-term residents only or only citizens. I'm going to set it to all visitors. I don't really care. Uh, and then you can th see the kind of things they want. So thread desired, they have four out of five. Cloth, they have two out of five. So once they have one out of five. Crutches, zero out of five. So on and so forth. That will probably change as they start hauling things. I do need to make some d buckets though, um, which I'm going to do in a second. Uh, so pretty cool to come back check this. And then you can assign doctors, diagnosticians, surgeons, bone doctors, <gasps> excuse me, etc. We'll let that play out a little bit. Um, so some of these numbers have changed. We got our two buckets. We got our crutches. Um, so some things that can improve, but for like a very beginner hospital, we have it working out. See if I have my altar. So B, F, and then P will give a sort of offering place is what they call it, but it's an altar. Um, and he'll build it here. And then I'm going to set this up again. Meeting area kind of does a lot of work here. So we're going to do meeting area, accept, and set it up as a... T oh, all right. So our uh, caravan from our civilization has arrived. So it says, although it is a grim reminder of the winter hardships to come, the supply caravan from the closed books, which is the name of our civilization, is a welcome sight. Their eyes are alight with the anticipation of inspecting the splendid products of your industrious craft wars. Take careful stock of your own stores. What these merchants offer might very well be the difference between a prosperous future and a slow and meaningless death. Uh, I love that meaningless death. It's perfect. It's like useless. Perfect. All right. So temple here. We're going to do no specific deity. Uh, so anyone can pray here. I'm also going to tweak something here. I didn't really notice uh, because I didn't have a door. I don't kind of kind of the whole stairwell here, which I don't want. Uh, so let's do it like that. And we have our diplomacy notification, which I will go ahead and get to here. I'm your light uh, liaison from the mountain homes. Let's discuss your situation. There's much to share. He sends it to the world map. We'll look at that later. Um, all right, so things I like to get. Uh, random leather I like to get. I don't know what leather is the best. Um, I usually pick something pretty nondescript, like, I don't know, give me horse leather. Uh, cloth, sure, that's all you got. Give me that. Some silk. Again, most of the stuff I pick is stuff I know I cannot create in the next year or so, or probably won't be able to, um, or don't want to. Um, 
or stuff I might need in the case of a weird sort of strange mood um, where they need like you know glass for example is something I always get um, so I'm gonna go here uh, first of all seeds I want these two for sure um, I usually don't I don't think I ask much for glass um, because honestly, at this point, most stuff I can create myself. I do like to uh, click on most of the instruments here, um, simply because uh, creating these is kind of annoying. You have to create all the individual parts and then construct it together, and it's so hard to learn what needs what. So I just kind of like let me, let me buy the whole thing. I'm not going to worry about it. So it's sort of a convenience factor. Uh, so that's what I do. Um, I always add some sort of drink just in case something terrible goes wrong. Um, Cheeses I don't care about, they always bring them. Uh, I really don't care. I'll do plump helmets just because I don't think I need it. Bags I don't care about. Thread, I always pick some pigtail thread. I'll probably be making up by then, but just in case I can't, I like to get some some of these. Again, mostly for strange moods. Um, I just generally doesn't come up. Uh, sand, I'll grab random sand, grab random glass. Um... Uh, I can make a lie myself, but I don't care about any of this. Sure, give me some cloth. Some thread from, a, you know, animal thread. It's a little bit different. Again, it could cause an issue with a strange mood. It's always good just to have. So by next year, we'll have it for sure, if not earlier. I can always butcher something and get some of this. Um, or, like, build a farmer's workshop and process, you know, it that way. Uh, I don't need any of this. All right, so we're going to hit done. Again, you can see when I ask for it, it's going to increase the price, you know, usually around double, um, which is fine. But also, if I go next screen, they also will, you know, 214%, you know, they'll pay 214% of the actual, you know, sort of going rate for backpacks. I'm not making backpacks, so it doesn't really matter to me. I'm selling the mugs. That's the way it's going to work. So, um, all right. So if we look at the top, you'll notice they're going to start coming through here. There's a caravan coming in right here. They'll go down and carry their stuff. And it says here, merchants have arrived, aren't loading their goods. Great, got a nice notification for it. Ah, okay, it's still steel stuff for me, it's really annoying. And once they load up, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and move some goods here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna search for finished goods. And I don't have any bins that say finished, really. Yeah, so I guess I haven't stored anything. So I'm going to click mugs. Yeah, so there we go. So the different types of mugs are going to pop up. And actually, oh my god, this is like way better uh, than it used to be. A lot of limestone mugs, a lot of jet mugs, bauxite mugs, oops, some saltpeter mugs. Let's go ahead. And, yeah, let's close these. That might be the best way to do this. This is not normally the way I do it. Normally, uh, I have bins, which... It's supposed to make things easier because people just grab bins and instead of moving 60 mugs, you know, one person carrying a mug, you know, for 60 people, you have one bin that moves 60 mugs, right? So it's sort of efficient, right? Um, here, nothing's been stored in a bin, so I just have all my mugs lying around. So I'm just selecting all of them to individually be moved. It's going to take a long time to get carried uh, to my trade depot. If I click here, you'll see 237 items are usually being are, are going to be uh, delivered. I normally have like six to, to 12 because they're bins, right? Um, so we're going to wait a while for this. You'll see individual people is coming, dragon style 220, 219, 18, so on and so forth. So we'll, we'll wait for that to count down a little bit. Uh, man. That is, that's the first time it's happened since I've been playing this edition. So, uh, it used to happen before actually quite a bit, but yeah, they're going and grabbing bugs from everywhere here. Uh, so we have our temple, we have our dining hall, we have our hospital set up. Uh, oh my God, this guy's stealing more bugs. So annoying. Um, good amount of wood kicking around so we're fine we're mostly waiting to, it was going to increase our numbers we only have 11 people we need more than that um so waiting 176 that's fine uh all right let's go ahead and start i'm not going to like fully set it up but we're going to start sort of anticipating the setup of our 
smelting industry. So what I like to do is I build five of them. So three on the left and then two on the right here. And then the other spot that's left out here is the metalsmith. Um, this is the one you need an anvil in order to build. So always embark on an anvil if you can. If you can't, you, you got to make one. And that, that's a little bit tougher uh, to start off with. Um, you really just have to buy it um from a merchant so you kind of have to deal with it which is fine because if they have one offered right now you just buy it and set it up so uh let's take a look still waiting on over 100 items so again mug by mug they're carrying uh, i could even add more probably right now but we'll, we'll we'll deal with that in a moment so migrants have arrived all right so we had 11 we now have 12 let's see how many we get ah oh, okay good 14 All right, so we got five. Again, I'll take it. Not incredible, but I'll take it. Uh, let's see if they have any grazing animals before we forget. Uh, the cavies do need to be put in. Uh, this is a duck, we're fine. So that's the only one we have to put in to the pasture. What do we have here? Still waiting on the 60 plus items to be hauled. All right, so we have that set up. Let's do our. Uh, all right, so uh, we're going to do a couple different stockpiles here. So this is going to be where we start smelting. And the first thing I want over here, and again, all these get stored in bins, so I don't need it to be too big. Uh, but we want a type of stone over here. And specifically what we want is uh, economic stone. And uh, I'm going to remove a few here. Uh, I don't remember if calcite. I don't think calcite is one. Gypsum, colonite. I know these aren't. I'm gonna I'm gonna leave a few that I'm not sure about, but these are my economic ones that are going to make uh either flux stone or uh coke, uh which again allows us it's sort of like fuel. Um so we'll we'll put economic ones there. Um we'll do a new one here and we'll put metal stones here. Um so again we'll click stones, go to custom, uh we'll only allow the metal ones. That's all we care about here. Um, and again, that gives easy access for these guys, for these types of stones. Uh, over here, we're gonna put ours or blocks, and we want, uh, for here, I don't want any of this, any of this, any of this, or any of this. All I want is other. Uh, I don't want ash. I, I literally all I want coal. That's all I care about. Is, our, is coke here? I don't think it is. Yeah, so that's all I want is coal um, for this one. And then we're going to do another one. And what we're going to do here is do bars or blocks. Again, for easy access. Um, I don't care about any of this stuff. So we don't want any of that. We don't want any of that. Blocks of metal is fine. And I'm going to leave this just so I have a place to put this stuff. So again, Kia's or Kia's or whatever, don't take it. Um, and then that way we have metal bars as well. Um, so we'll, we'll leave that like that. And again, all this stuff, all these four stockpiles we just made, we'll have stuff stored in bins, um, which greatly maximizes sort of how much you can store in this area. Um, so that's good. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, pause for one second, and I'm just going to set up this sort of mining area for my next workshop. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. Oops, I hate when I do that. And something like that, that, that. I'm gonna go down and pause while I do the rest here. They'll be leaving soon. What? That was very quick. Okay, hold on. Uh. Okay, there. Yeah, they're here. All right. I need my broker to show up. Let's see who shows up. He does. Okay. Or she does. Not move. Come on. All right. Trade. All right. So I'm going to select all my mugs here. That's everything. Okay. So we have 6,700 plus dwarf bucks, whatever you want to call them, to trade. Uh, and then we can pick over here what we want to get for that. So I'm going to take some glass because I know we need it possibly. Uh, we'll take some clay because I, I I have access to it, but I don't have to worry about it. It's there. Uh, I'm going to grab a rope. 
just so I have it. I don't care about those. I have a couple of instruments here. I'm going to grab another instrument. This one's a thousand. I'm not wasting my money on that. Um, a goose, I don't care. Alpaca, yeah, whatever. I don't care. Milk, beer. We'll take some beer. Some ale. Uh, we'll go there. A couple buckets. Why not? Uh, again, things I can make, but now I don't have to. Um, I'll probably still make more eventually. Steel sword. Let's take it just in case we have something kind of early on go bad. Uh, I really don't care about clothes or armor early on. I, I probably should. I'm just, I'm not going to. All right, let's do this shield. Uh, chest, let's see. Gypsum, sweet pod seeds, yellow sand, black sand, dwarf sugar. Cave wheat. Don't care about any of that. So this is a thousand. There's no way. All right, some leather, some cloth. Uh, let's take this crown. Let's take this ring. I don't know. I like sometimes like like just grabbing random stuff like that. We'll take the extra anvil. That usually helps get your allowed weight. So if you notice, uh, they have twenty three. I don't know. It's called pounds of extra, you know, units of extra weight. Um, here, this weight is seventy eight. So by clicking that, it satisfies that requirement there. Um, so I don't have to worry about it. Do we have? Oh, we have no drink. Oh no! I have to get on that. I have totally neglected that. Uh, let's grab some plum helmets so we can do that. And um, we have some amount of meat, but we don't really need that. What we need is to plant plum helmets. Oh no! Grab a few extra. Did we have any? Um, any alcohol we could buy? I think we bought it already. All right, let's grab some some thread. Backpacks we don't want. Uh, from what I hear, you do not want backpacks in your fort at all, which is why I'm not going to be making them to trade. Um, there's they cause a few different issues with your military once you get a military set up we'll do crutches and splints uh, a codex and some sheets and then we'll trade that and it says he seems ecstatic with the trading great we can stop that and then i need a still like now so what i'm gonna do is high priority um this is our plant area and I was going to do this. And what I'll let people still here. He has access to plants. And I'm actually going to put for right now until we get other stuff set up. I'm going to set this as just like a generic food. Um, I, I I don't want I don't want anything that I don't say I want. All right, I want meat. Oh, okay. I don't want unprepared fish. Uh, I don't want plants. I don't want seeds. Oops. Or that or that pretty much i don't want anything else in here after that they're all that up all right that'll do that and hopefully they should take this out like right away and we can build a still and i'm gonna queue that up like right now boom get it built as soon as it's built i'm gonna set up a work order for brewing our plump helmets which we absolutely have to do every time we brew it we get uh seeds we did get some drink that we traded with which is will help satisfy some things that helps explain why we're not super happy quite yet um ah uh, someone needs to build this like right now once once they build this we'll be fine um all the simple work order and we'll be good but uh yeah not ideal i normally don't forget to do that here we go he's carrying a rock over here stone all right so we're gonna go over here we're gonna say brew and we want drink from plant fruit would be things you pull from the surface or like trade for with humans or various caravans plant would be our our plump helmets so classified as plant so we're gonna do that i'm gonna set it down to like three or like i'm gonna go down to two i i noticed that when you brew drink from plant uh, each individual one will be like five drinks. So you want to be careful how many you queue up because you can go way over what you intended to, which can be fine. But 
you know, that may be a waste of labor or something. So uh, if our drinks is less than, I'm going to do 125, um, which it is. Uh, so they're going to start brewing some drinks. And the reason why I do that a little bit extra like that is, again, every time they brew uh, one of those uh, plump helmets, they generate seeds, which allows us to plant more plump helmets. So uh, that's what we want. So we should see someone in a second start coming here, brewing plump helmets. Yep, there we go. So he is brewing drink from plant. Uh, this is uh, Tobol. Um, and, uh, and then he's going to make that drink. He should place it over here in his stockpile, grab another plant, and start brewing again. So here he goes, drops it off, comes back, and moves the seeds, and then there he goes. So he's he's doing work. Boom. All right. <laughs> Crisis averted. Um, all right. Do we have charcoal? Let me check. So this is the stock screen. Uh, we'll clear this out. Uh, what we can do here is we can look at bars. Uh, we have nickel bars. That's it. How do we have nickel? Did I? I didn't. I didn't trade for that. Did I? That it's orange. Yeah, I wonder if that's like, it's in our fort, but it's not ours. I wonder if the traders have it. Um, so what we need to do is we need to, uh, rather than do it there, I'm going to do it here. Uh, we're going to do charcoal. So we're going to set up a charcoal job. So charcoal is where you burn wood and make charcoal out of it. Um, so we're going to do like, I don't know, again, three if refined coal is less than, I don't know, what should I do? Like 25? Let's do 20. I don't want to use wood for too much. So if we have less than 20 refined coal, we'll make charcoal. Um, and you need that, at least one of those, to start smelting some of the stuff that can actually be fuel. So we'll wait till this gets kind of completed. So we'll kind of watch it for a second. And uh, see how that works. By the way, watch my drink stores and my seed stores here as the drink uh, gets produced. Again, it just, you know. You're going to see it go up and then the seeds will go up as well so we have 62 drink right now let's see if that goes up again people are going to be drinking as it's going but hopefully it shouldn't be going up so 62 drink 87 drinks just went up uh 35 seeds so it's going to keep again that's what i mean like it goes up a lot uh again that was 20 some so uh all right we made some charcoal which means i'm going to pause for one second and just see what kind of tasks we have here for these, I actually like to not use work orders. I probably should. It's probably better. But I like to just like, just absolutely dominate uh, the Coke. So by two minutes and Lignite, uh, I just, I what I do is I click it and hit do it forever. And I'll do Lignite as well over here. And I'll probably do one more that does that. And that way it just goes right through it and make sure we have a ton of fuel for all the other for the other three smelters so uh we'll let those kind of go i'm gonna see for one second i just it shows you what you have access to so so far we have platinum and tetrahedrate neither super useful platinum sites for like expensive sort of like high value things uh tetrahedrate copper and 20 percent chance of silver if i'm not mistaken i can check in a second wait it might be over here platinum 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 tuminous Wait, really no cop uh no uh tetrahedra here oh no this is tetrahedra okay uh yeah 20 percent chance of silver and then otherwise copper um depends on how many bars it makes or whatever so uh i don't i don't really need that right now um i did not finish this workshop level so let's do that all right uh three and three i want this to be Fours, not ones. All right. Boom. Boom. That. That. Five. One, two, three. Oh, too many. Oh, yeah, I thought that looked kind of fat, which I don't want. Uh, and then we'll do here. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. Oops.
backfire. There's nothing terribly wrong with that. Sometimes like you notice way too late that you totally messed something up, but whatever. All right, go ahead and roll with that. And I'll do bedrooms again um, around. I'll still leave a space here. I don't know. I just don't feel right to put bedrooms there. Uh, but I can, I get something like almost 80, if not more bedrooms out of this level and this level, which is worth it. And they're right next to where they need to be, um, you know, workshops and whatnot. So that's good. All right. So doing that, we have our hospital, we have our temple, we have our dining room. Workshop level two, stockpile, workshop level one, and our farming sort of cooking, still drinking industry. And then the surface. Uh, what do we got going on the surface? Let's see. Others. Kangaroos. Kangaroos. Yep, kangaroos. Uh, I'm going to build our sort of first line of defense here uh i'm going to build a bridge that's going to retract this way and i'm going to put it right here uh that way it will retract up and it'll actually form a wall right here and nothing can get in it kind of screws any caravan or traders that are here but hopefully they're elves and we don't care about elves do we so not worried about it Brewing drinks, great. Still growing stuff. We got these guys. This guy had a sad thought. Hold on. What's going on here? I am separated from Minkot Copper Bronze. Copper Bronze? Okay. I cannot give an assignment. So this person is separated from someone. Uh, they're probably going to have an unmet need at some point. That's like be with family or loved one or something like that. And it's because of that. Um, I can't do anything about that. It's a little frustrating. But Normally these aren't huge issues, but they do like give them a little speech bubble that says negative. So, um, but look at all these positives. So, uh, bitter for getting an argument, but otherwise satisfied while crying on somebody, satisfied at work, uh, uneasy after being unable to pray for some guy, which we'll set up in a minute. Satisfied, euphoric, satisfied, blissful, satisfied at work, satisfied improving, wonder remembering communing with the fountain of starting, which is uh, a deity. Uh, satisfied at work, satisfied while yelling at somebody. Great. Who does not feel satisfied dealing with somebody? Um, but yeah, so you kind of keep an eye on their moods. But again, the worst one I have right now is this one. I wonder if they're a child. Let's see. Uh, no, they're not. They're a woodcrafter. They're meditating on poetry. You? Yep. Uh, let's see here. Is this the one I was just looking at? I think it was, but they're starting to attend to their needs here. So they need to pray to this person. Uh, I'm going to make some temples again in a, in a moment. Uh, again, it helps us get some stone, but overall, not not horrible looking here. Uh, we just got a bunch of new migrants too. So, um, all right. So I'm going to build a temple layer. Let's go like this. And they need a five by five dance area that does not include sort of areas where they have items um so what i like to do is something like this and then i go about six high and which allows me to make one area there and then they have a five by five kind of dance area um, i don't think you need that much but that's what i do oh, and i did it the wrong way hold on let me do it this way skip here so i'll do it here So that sets up kind of one sort of area here, and we'll do one more here. Um, we'll probably do more than this in a second. This will sort of set up a oh wrong thing here. I I skipped two. Uh, I don't have to. But I saw that, hold on, did I do three here? I did four. 
uh, if they share a wall, the wall doesn't count for both, which I thought it did for the longest time, and I think it might have used to. But uh, but yeah, that has since changed, which is a little bit of a bummer. So, oops. And the right click is a little bit annoying. Yeah. But whatever. Ah, the soundtrack to this game is like so good. It's just perfect. You know, sometimes games just nail it. It's it's nothing spectacular, but it's just perfect. That's how this one is. Looks good to me. Uh, I'm just going to mine also this area right here. Right, just so we have that space for the corridor. All right, let's go. Um, all right, hospital, dining room, temple. Uh, looking at some of the temple stuff, let's, or the statues. Statue of Isis. Item is an image of Iset, the deity of chaos, war, and fortresses depicted as male dwarf and dwarves in bauxite by Dumbo Authorab. The dwarves are prostrating themselves before Iset, so people praying to a god. This looks like a mosquito? Giant mosquito? Of a giant firefly. The item is a well designed image of a giant firefly in limestone by Urvad Brimberdan. So, fireflies we're seeing there. Ooh, we need barrels. Do we not have. A barrel setup. <gasps> Stupid. That's why our bins. Oh, okay. All right. Let me do. That was stupid of me. I didn't do the carpenter stuff. Wooden. Oops. Wooden BS. Yeah. Good. Wooden barrel. Uh, let's do our three. Again, I I I didn't set this up before. Oops. Wrong button. Uh, wooden barrel three. If empty barrels is less than. <sighs> Let's do five. And now it gets a little extra if we need it. And then wooden bins. No wonder we weren't going through our wood. <laughs> I was wondering. I was like, man, we did not cut a lot of trees and we still have a ton of wood left. Uh, let's do empty bins. And we did three. So yeah, let's do five. Perfect. All right. That should help. We made that one single batch of barrels at the beginning that allowed us to brew a little bit of drink. And plus we like drank a lot of stuff, so we had a bunch of empty barrels. But I forgot to make the recurring one, so yeah. Recurring orders are so nice. Uh, you don't have to think about it once you make it. So hopefully those spam sort of cancellation errors will stop. Oh, do we have the... Uh, and as long as no, so let's go ahead and do that. Uh, oops, <sighs> so annoying. If you don't click the search bar and start typing, you get all kinds of shortcuts going. All right, rock man. All right, we want like let's do five, and we'll do rock here. And that's if we don't have. Let's do fifteen. That's fine. You know what? I'm going to set it to 14. And again, that just lets it... So, like, if we have... Nope. Sorry. I want 16. Wrong idea. Uh, I'm glad I worked that out. So, if we have 10, it'll make 5 more, which gets us to 15. It'll check. Do we have less than 16? Yes, we have 15. It'll make 5 more, which gets us, you know, much more than just 16. So, that way, there's a little bit of leeway if we, if we build a few... Uh, things that need mechanisms, it won't queue up a job right away until it gets below that 60. Um, which just makes our dwarves a little more available. A little bit of work on the front end, a little bit more time on the back end. Which is fine. Right, so that should help that problem. So they're smelting all kinds of stuff. Let's see here what we have access to still. Helena, which is silver. We'll do, we'll do that. Let's let's do some silver. And let's do our tetrahedrate just because we have it. And I'll probably do one for the platinum now anyways. Because we don't we don't have what we need for iron yet. Um I already did tetrahedrate, right? Yeah. So here cancel. Let's do platinum. It's probably not a lot. That's fine. Yeah, we're already at a bit too minutes call. Like, whatever. 
Uh, we'll dig more and more, like we're digging right now. What do we have here? Microline, claystone. Um, but yeah, so we have a pretty good setup here. Um, we. I did not. Oh, I hit that button. Uh, we set up our sort of fort. We started uh, digging down, cut some trees, uh, sort of set up our service area, went down, um, got our farming and our still set up, which we almost messed up a little bit. Uh, workshop layers with our bedrooms. Again, basic. We could add more to it. We're going to. We just haven't quite gotten there yet. Uh, some offices for our nobles to set up work orders. We have some of our stockpile sort of layer area here again lack of bins my bad but we're we're fixing that uh second workshop level we're gonna get to eventually we'll get there um our dining room our generic sort of temple non-script kind of thing um a hospital just to just to store some stuff uh again some of our thread and cloth and whatnot um we'll still need to flush this out we need traction benches we'll talk about that later um and then we're starting to build our temple layer here. So we're going to have all kinds of temples to all kinds of deities that we have uh, in our civilization and in our fortress. And that way people can satisfy their need to not just have a generic temple, but one specific to their sort of deity that they want to focus on. Um, and then we got to keep digging uh, deeply and greedily until we find what we need, which is eventually death. Um, but we haven't gotten there yet. We're still sort of getting a prosperous mode. Um, but I think we're going to pause here. Uh, it's getting kind of late. We've been streaming for two hours. But this is a good setup. Uh, we'll continue this uh, next time. Uh, get our temple layer done. What I want to do is set up a military pretty soon. I want to get some access to some iron bearing ore. And that way we can get some steel. Uh, well, first iron. And then by way of iron and fluxstone, some steel. Um, and start getting them training. And hopefully by then, uh, you know, not before then, we'll have access to... Uh, not access to, but we'll sort of have uh, issues with either cavern creatures, forgotten beasts, invaders, random undead, whatever it is. You know, we, I don't know what the deals with the world. I'll probably look at legends and see what's going on with our world, but uh, hopefully not before then. Uh, you know, before we have our military set up, will we get any of that? But, um, but yeah. So uh, until next time. I'll see you guys uh, when we start up again. So take care. See you guys.